In this video, we're going to be talking about ROS packages and the Cat Can Build tool. ROS packages are another organizational tool for our ROS code. ROS packages will group together multiple nodes, libraries, and other ROS resources all around a particular purpose or a category of functionality. All of our RoboJackets projects feature multiple ROS packages to help us split things up. We'll have a ROS package for all of the path planning nodes, for example, or a separate ROS package that handles all the simulation resources for a given project. ROS packages are the buildable and redistributable units of ROS code. Packages are what we share with other developers when we want to collaborate on code. You've already seen the names of a few ROS packages pop up when we're using various ROS command line tools. Whenever we use ROS run, for example, we give it a package name along with the node type. Today, we'll start working with packages more directly. To get started, there are two command line tools we're going to talk about that help us work with the packages we already have on our system. The first tool is called ROS pack. So let's open up a terminal. And source the setup script. And when we run ROS pack dash H, you can see that there are a lot of subcommands that ROS pack exposes to us. Now, most of these are commands that you're never going to run. They're primarily intended for use in scripts and helping you build tools that work with ROS packages in an intelligent way. But there are a couple commands in here that can be useful for you to double check the setup of your system. For example, if you just want to see all the packages that you currently have installed with ROS, you can use ROS pack list. And that will list all of the names and installation locations for any packages that you have installed. If you want to double check that you have a specific package installed, you can use ROS pack find and give it the package name. So if I do ROS pack find turtle sim, then I will see the installation location for the turtle sim package. That lets me know that I have it installed. If I gave it a name that I don't have it installed, let's say turtle sim 2, which doesn't exist, if I run that, then I get error package turtle sim 2 not found because it's not installed. So that's the ROS pack command. If you do ever end up writing tools or scripts that work with ROS packages, ROS pack is going to be your friend. The second important command is ROS CD. Like the Linux tool CD for change directory that lets us move around the Linux file system, ROS CD lets us jump to the file system location for a specific package just based on its name. If you use ROS CD to jump to a package that you've installed via apt, you'll get taken to the share folder for that package's installation. So for example, if we type in ROS CD turtle sim, we will get taken to the share folder for the turtle sim package. This is the same folder that got listed out when we did ROS pack find. If you use ROS CD to jump to a package that you're building from source, it will take you to the source folder for that package. So packages are the buildable unit of ROS code. So when we build any ROS code, we have to build an entire package as one piece. But I've already mentioned that most projects use multiple ROS packages. So it's very common for you to be working on multiple ROS packages at once anytime that you're developing inside of ROS. To help us work with multiple ROS packages at the same time, we have a build tool called Catkin. Catkin lets us group our packages together into a workspace, and we can build all of the packages in a workspace at the same time. When you were working in Code Academy, you got introduced to the idea of a C++ compiler, and you were building all of your code by calling the compiler directly. In that case, you were using the compiler called G++. Now, when your projects start to get more complex, where you have lots of files and you're depending on external libraries, you have to send a lot of very specific flags to the compiler. And so we have build tools that let us describe the setup of our project at a slightly higher level and let the build tool generate the specific flags for us. A very common build tool in the Linux world is called make. You've probably already seen the name of this build tool in some of your examples. Anytime you see a make file, that's the build rules file for a make project. So make runs our compiler often multiple times for the same project. Now build tools like make often require information that's specific to the system you're building your code on. They might include absolute paths to different library resources, for example. And those paths will exist on your machine, but then when you give that project to someone else, the same paths don't exist on their machine necessarily. To address that problem, we have build system generators, and that's what CMake is. CMake lets us bump up to the next level of abstraction, where we ask CMake to find those specific paths for given libraries, and then generate the make file, which we'll then call the compiler. And now at the level of CMake, it's easy to share projects back and forth across different machines and different developers, let CMake figure out the specifics of each setup, generate the make file, which can then call the compiler to build our code. 
But the CMake tool only works with one CMake project at a time, and each of our ROS packages is a CMake project. So we need another tool on top of that to help us coordinate CMake through building multiple projects, and that's what Catkin is. So while it might feel that we're constantly jumping between different tools to build our code, you've actually just been walking up a steady progression through layers of abstraction to go from the compiler, where you're dealing with all the specific details in the exact moment of how to build that code, all the way up through CMake and Catkin, which let you define the high-level dependencies for your project and let the tool sort out the rest. Now that we've been introduced to the roles of packages and Catkin inside of ROS, let's go ahead and create our own Catkin workspace in our first ROS package. To do this, we'll need to open up another terminal and get it set up to use ROS. And to create a workspace is a very simple task. It's just two folders, one nested inside the other. The first folder is your workspace folder. It can be called whatever you want, but a really common pattern is to put it in your home directory and call it catkin underscore ws for catkin workspace. So we'll call the make dir command and give it the name catkin underscore ws. Then inside of that workspace folder, we need to create a source folder called src. So we'll do make dir again with the folder name src. This source folder is where all of the ROS packages will live inside of this workspace. So anytime we create a new package, we need to be inside of the source folder. And anytime you clone a Git repository that contains ROS packages, you should be cloning it into the source folder for a workspace. So to create our own package, let's go into that source folder, and we're going to use the tool catkin create package. So we'll run catkin underscore create underscore pkg. The first argument we need to give it is the name for a package. Let's call it rj underscore training. And then after that, we can give it any dependencies we already know we'll need to make our package work. In this case, since we're going to be writing C++ code using some standard ROS messages, we have two dependencies that we know right off the bat. We need to depend on ROS CPP, the C++ client library for ROS, and std messages, the standard messages package for ROS. So with those two added, I'll go ahead and run that command, and that will generate a few things for us. First, it creates an RJ training directory. This is our package directory, and within that is all the resources for our package. Then we have two folders, a source folder for all of our C++ source code, and an include slash RJ training folder for any public headers that our package wants to expose. And next to those two folders are two files, a package.xml file, which is our package manifest file, and a cmakelist.txt file, which contains the cmake build rules for our package. Let's open up our package manifest by running get it, rjtraining slash package.xml. The package manifest file contains all the metadata for our package. This includes everything from the author information through the licensing details, but arguably the most important information are these dependency tags. This is how Catkin knows what packages our code depends on. The build depend tag is for any dependencies that have to be present when our code is built, and the exec depend tag is used to name any packages that have to be installed alongside our package in order for our package to run. So it's important to remember that if you ever introduce a new dependency into the code for a ROS package, that you update the tags in the package manifest accordingly. Now we can close this and open up our cmakelist build rules file by running get it rj training cmakelist.txt. This is a standard CMake file, just with a couple extra commands that are given to us by Catkin. When you create nodes and libraries, you'll be adding executable and library targets in CMake like you would in any other CMake project. There will just be a few extra commands when we get to more ROS-specific resources that have to be built. As you can see, both the package manifest file and the CMake list file that are generated by Catkin Create Package contain a lot of extra documentation and examples on how to do common tasks. You don't have to understand all of this right now, but you can always look back at these documentation comments to learn how to do something new inside of a ROS package. Now that we have a package inside of our Catkin workspace, we can actually build it, even though we don't have any code to build. To build a Catkin workspace, we need to go back up into the Catkin workspace folder and run the command catkin underscore make. We'll see some output describing the steps Catkin is taking to build our CMake project, and then we'll let us know that everything is built and done. Cat can make is the default tool for building a Catkin workspace, but it's not the only tool, and it has a couple weaknesses. These weaknesses inspired the creation of the Catkin Tools project. Catkin Tools gives us a couple different commands for running Catkin in a more convenient way. Of particular importance is the Catkin build command. To get Catkin Tools, you might have to run sudo apt install python3 Catkin Tools if it's not already installed on your system. Now, in order to build our workspace using catkin build, we need to get rid of some of the mess left behind by catkin make. So we need to remove within the catkin workspace folder, 
the build directory, the devl directory, and the file source slash cmake lists that cat can make put there for us. With those out of the way, we can run cat can build. Cat can build is particularly useful because it can parallelize the builds of different packages and build your whole workspace a lot quicker. Cat can build is definitely the preferred command for building a cat can workspace, but it's not always available since it's not the default, and so it's good that you know cat can make as well. That's it for this video. We've looked at what ROS packages are and how the cat can build tool helps us work with multiple ROS packages at the same time. In the next video, we'll actually start writing our own nodes in C++ and put them in our RJ training package.